Father, we just praise you for this time. We thank you for the multiplication. He says that the expanding of the church, he says the battle of this war is not fought by the army, but by the individual. He says in the past, we've talked about the uh, Old Testament, that they only had the soldiers. And in the New Testament, it's the soldier. He says the individual soldier can become a general, but he says you've got to pay the price. So this is the price that's coming to the church. Become the bride. Become the bride. Become the bride. In Yeshua's name, amen. Well, they can stay there. You can keep that on, baby. I, I know where it's at. Okay, she got the vision. But we had the landscaping going on. I had the hedges, she had the lawn. Lord showed me a nation of Korea, and then uh, Korea had a God's plan on. It's not because of people, it's not because of the Korea, Korean. God had a plan for, I'm going to Korea for Israel. Amen. There's a strings that came down from the heaven, three strings, and uh, that one string touched the land of Israel, one string touched the land of Korea. Is Korea going to use by for help the Israel? It's not because of uh, the, the Christianity. I don't know what it is. God had a mission for Korea to help the Israel. Korea said uh, many people need to wake up, open for Israel become the real, the real nation for end time. Korea going to use by end time for the whole world, and uh, there is going to be a persecution. Some Koreans, there's already the Koreans going to have a persecution because of the end time, and a nation of Korea being going to be used for end time over the Israel. And then uh, my stomach is uh, burning like a fire. Okay. And then uh, uh, God put the, the fire in my stomach. Uh, that is uh, for the <laughs> river of life. Because the, the Korea have, uh, need to be a new life. And uh, right now, Christianity in Korea is uh, going dying and uh, dying. But uh, God's not going to let dying the Korean Christianity. And then uh, this is a symbol of the life of the Korean Christian will rise up for just for the help of Israel. Amen. Praise God. You may move the chair. Okay. Bye bye. <clears throat> Uh, I haven't talked to her all week. What are you going to eat for dinner? I don't know. What are you going to eat for dinner? We, we, wait until you get into our teaching. Let's get to the Parsha reading. It, we're running a little late. This is fine. Um, how many people know this is not a normal place? Praise God. It has to do, not with the building, but the tabernacle. And we're the tabernacle. Let's go into... Uh, Exodus 26, 33. And in Exodus, we start seeing a pattern. And see, everything in the Old Testament is a pattern, but it manifests in the New Testament in the Spirit. So those things that we see in the, in the Spirit, they're, they're proclaimed someplace in the past. When we get folks that have this new revelation and it's contrary to the Bible, boom, it's false teaching. Like this Rob Bell guy. I don't know. If, nobody's ever heard of Rob Bell, huh? Yeah, it's a good thing. He, he's, he's really off track. But we're going to get into this. And, and Moses, Moses made an, uh, another trip up to the place on the top of the mountain. And in verse, uh, let's start with, oh, I, got, I, got, I, I marked it in my other book, and I got it back up here. Let's... Um, Let's verse uh, 22, 26, 22, and we'll see, we'll see something here. And, and for the rear of the tabernacle to the west, you shall make six boards. Verse 20, oh, I'm sorry. 
Let's uh, fast forward. Verse 30, okay, 2630. Then you shall erect the temple according to its plan, which you have been shown in the mountain, and you shall make a veil of blue and purple scarlet material of fine twisted linen, and shall make, uh, be made with cherubim, the, the work of the skillful uh, workmen, and you shall hang it on the four pillars of the acacia overlaid with gold, their hooks also being of gold, and their four sockets of silver, and you shall hang up the veil under the clasp, and you shall bring the ark of the testimony within the veil, and the veil shall serve for you a partition between the holy place and the holies of holies. Verse 34, And you shall put the mercy seat on the ark of, of the te uh, testimony in the holies of holies, and you shall set the table outside the, the veil, lampstand opposite the table of the, on the side of the tabernacle towards the south, and you shall put the table on the north side. We start going through this, and we're, we're getting to the point where we start realizing some of the types and shadows of the Old Testament. When you start talking about the curtain, there's a curtain of flesh. There are boundaries that we deal with in the flesh, and they're, they're, they're transformed, or we, we overcome certain things in the spirit. And so we see uh, Moses... Uh, uh, in, in, in Hebrew, when we start getting to verse uh, 33, and the curtain shall separate for you between the holy and the holies of holies. Now, in some of the different translations, it's translated differently. One of them it says two, and one says four. How many people have two you in your, ba in your Bible? Anybody have two you? Verse 33, 20, chapter 26, verse 33. Some has for you. Okay. Well, in the Hebrew, um, it says to or for you. It's broken down in two different, it's a, plural, it's a plural verb there. And so there's action needed by certain people for this occasion. Why? Because you got the holies of holies. And you got, the, you got the holy place, and you got the holies of holies. Well, what separated these is a curtain. And, you know, if you, if, if you know there's three curtains in the tabernacle, starting from the outside to the inside, and the names of the curtains are the, you know, the way, the truth. And thank you for your much. Those are the three curtains of the tabernacle. But Moses could go in the holies of holies, but the priests couldn't. There was a separation of the flesh there where they could not go into the holies of holies. So it was to the priests, they had to organize this, but it was for Moses. And we see somebody like James Durham was here last week. There's a transformation. Let's talk about this guy's bio. He's ministry 35 years, set aside. Sound like his beginnings were kind of a little rough. He married a Korean girl. Oh, my God. <laughs> Got his life straightened up. That's, a, that's, a, that's always the story. But he consecrated himself and was set aside. He went through the studies and he went through the serving parts. He went through the, I don't want to call it the evolution of the priesthood, but there was the stepping stones, and the stepping stones weren't stumbling stones. A lot of times people understand the offices of the five-fold ministry, they, they turn them into stumbling stones, but they're actually stepping stones if you're managing yourself right. So as, as we see what he was doing, there was a, he, over his career, he's been associated with certain people, then he's pushed away from certain people. And it was quite amazing how uh, Pastor Richard uh, uh, was here last week. Richard and Kay. Richard... Billingsley. And these guys were hardcore Kenneth Copeland fans. Well, Kenneth Copeland kind of got over by the Pope. And they're doing that Pope thing now. And what it is, we, 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 the, the term they said, I've heard this term a couple times, these people that get associated with the Pope, Joel Osteen, they get power hungry. They get drunk with the power of God. But it's not the, the power of God, it was a religious spirit. 
And this is how the Antichrist is going to fool people because they're going to get them off track with this religious drunkenness. And, and, and so we pray for Kenneth Copeland. And, and because Kenneth Copeland, he, he's into the dual covenant stuff. Years ago he wasn't, and he jumped in that boat. Well, the Jews are over here. God will figure them out. They've got a special way. We had, no, that's a lie from the pit. The king is the king is the king. And if you study the Paleo Hebrew, you understand Yeshua, Yehuda, right? Hello. The king of Judah. Amen. So we pray for Israel. We got a special time coming up. We need to pray. But there's an action needed by the priests to consecrate themselves as Moses did. Remember, Moses was in the desert for 40 years. He saw the burning bush in the beginning of his journey, and then he was releasing the burning bush. So what happened last week, there were impartations. Now, how the, uh, the prophetic operates? The prophetic operates out of association, impartation, and activation. There's different levels of the prophetic that's going on in this ministry all the time. The key is, are you plugging yourself in? You know, oh, I got my plug, plug in, plug out, plug in, plug out. Well, I'm going to go down there. And, and see, what happens is people get this little, whoom, I got my engine warmed up, ooh, but they never really finish the trip. They plug in, but they don't stay there and get their batteries fully charged. You know, by the end of Sunday, we had Friday night, Saturday night. I went to service on Sunday, came back Sunday afternoon, and then we had another prayer meeting at Kimberly's house. You know, we have Holy Ghost buzz. We're here to release that. It has to happen. You're not hearing this anyplace else because we have to combine this with the end time understanding what's going on out there because everything in the end time has to do with the Spirit of God. And it gets down to some of the little, little things that we start dealing with and, and, and I don't want to sound like I'm getting legalism, but there, there are things, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to Tinas about, you know, some, you know the Paleo Hebrew. There's, there's some truths there that you guys have to pick up. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. You hey, vave. And so as we, we get into understanding where we're at in time, we have to be cognitive of what's going on. So let's, let's flip forward. The, the question right now to you what separates you from the holies of holies what is separating you what is separating you your calling is irrevocable there's something going on in you right now god is shredding twisting pulling there's some rotten teeth in you there's some sinking thinking whatever it takes bad roots get get it out get it out Get it out. You know, I bought, I bought Kimberly some uh, funky luggage. Is it you call it funky? You, you don't say funky. They don't say funky in Korean. But it's like silver and it shines. It reflects. It's really actually kind of, it's, it's kind of tricky. And the Lord showed me that's the reflection of the glory. So I can see her just walking through the, the, the airport and people falling out. So, <laughs> hi, can I pick up your luggage? <laughs> so we're, we're, I don't know. We're, we're going to have, have something good. Don't worry about us. We'll be fine. When she's gone, I do pray for her. Everything we're talking about is instruction of building the tabernacle. Why is the tabernacle important? Because that's what he's going to bring back. Bring back. He has to bring back the tabernacle for whom? The bride. So we're going to fast forward, and we're going to get into understanding end time, tongues of fire, and impartation. Does this sound good? Why is that? Because we got Easter coming up. <laughs> Passover, guys. Come on, I caught you. How many people got I got you? All right, we're going to be getting involved in Passover. Let's, let's talk about some of this stuff. Why do we need certain things in end time ministry? We're, let's go ahead to Acts chapter 2. 
verse 1 through 5. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 5. Uh, we, we've read it a dozen times. I want to hit on a couple things. And in this time, the next few weeks, we have some issues coming up. March 20th is a solar eclipse. Solar eclipse, this solar eclipse will follow the same path that the meteorite that hit Russia did last year. Literally, almost same time, same station, same trajectory, everything. And when we start thinking about the solar eclipse, anytime you see a solar eclipse has to do with judgment of the Gentiles. Okay? How many Gentiles do we have here? No, 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 no. no. We're all Hebrews. We're all part of the covenant. And so there's some things going to happen to agnostic, atheist, backslash, something's going to happen probably over in Russia. Now, earlier today, David was talking about war and rumors of war and all that. I, you know, anything's possible anytime. The equipping of you is the most important thing we can do right now. As I was praying for Kimberly, the, and she was prophesying, the, the, the gentleman in charge of the UN uh, moon wants to be president of Korea. And he's agnostic. He's sold out to the Muslims. The whole UN is controlled by the Muslim nations. All is about mu Muslim money. I'm sick and tired of hearing about lies that they're propagating over our country. Okay? So I don't want to go into that. Next week, the United States government is taking over the, U the YouTube. Or not YouTube, the, uh, you, uh, the Internet. The entire Internet is going to fall under control of the United States government next week. And guess what? There's a 355-page document that nobody's read that came straight out of the White House and is being shoved down our throats. And so whatever kind of freedoms you think we have right now, anything that we say can be held and used, will be used against us. <clears throat> preach the gospel, preach the gospel, preach the gospel. And, on the, and when the day of Pentecost had come and they were all together, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. It filled the the whole house where they had been sitting, and there appeared to be to them tongues of fire distributing themselves and resting on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Verse 5, Now there were, there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because they were... They were each one hearing them speak in their own t language. I've been really getting into some prayer. And I've been studying on the generals. And I, I love Mario Murillo. Mario Murillo was probably one of the first people that prayed for me back in the early 90s. Mario, he was Assembly of God, Mario, uh, man of God. He's probably in his early 60s now. Great man. One of the real evangelists that are out there. And when, when, when I was with Pastor Fletcher on Sunday, Terry Moore got up there and he started prophesying. Terry Moore is a pastor of Soldier Church. And he said, the reason why there's no evangelists right now, all the evangelists are running mega churches. And so they're, they're running these mega churches. They got the evangelist gift going on and they're just bringing people back each week. They're not training them up or equipping them. They're stuck in that cycle of salvation. Well, we're prophetic evangelists, so we're going to train you properly and send you out. Let's, uh, let's, let's see. You have the, the rushing wind sound, the violent noise. It was the same sound as the shofar that was on top of the mountain when Moses got the Ten Commandments. It was exactly the same day that Moses got the first set of commandments is the same day as Pentecost. Exactly the same day. Exactly the same day. So when Shavuot comes, we see that when we're over in Korea, there's a release of the Spirit of God. It's good. We know these things are happening. You have to be cognitively aware of what's going on in the spirit realm and God's timing. When you got that down, then certain things can be released because you have an expectation because you see how things are functioning. See what I'm saying? 
There's a mechanics of this based on how things work and who are the players in this, in this scenario. So as Moses only had the right to enter into the holies of holies, if a priest went into the holies of holies, they'd die. And so you got real big headed and stuff. God is not promoting people based on a position right now. What he's doing is wartime promotions. Wartime promotion is a little bit different than the standard, let's have a religious thing, we're going to vote, and we're going to put deacon so-and-so up way high, and, you know, all this politics. It's not going to happen in this time. We see the Israeli Air Force being the number one Air Force because when it goes to battle, it literally picks whoever's the hot gun, the top gun, at the time gets to fly first. And I believe that the evangelists and the pastors who are releasing the right thing, God's going to push them forward. As we were praying over Kimberly, the Lord was showing me that there's a layers of generals coming. And I, I, I was talking to Brett about this earlier today. That he said that our United States government has terminated all of its generals. Our army has been systematically cut down. And all the generals who have had any say so have been cut out. But there's a, another generation coming. There's always another generation. There's always another generation. So God's going to raise up that generation, and either you get on top of the wave, or you're going to get crunched. And those people that get crunched are people that are in sin, and they don't know what time it is. Because we are at war, and God's going to, he's not going to hold any bars, because he needs you to be pure in heart to release that. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And he says, And it shall be in the last days, God's says that I will pour, out my, pour forth my spirit upon all mankind, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see the visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Praise God. David, you're going to prophesy. You're old man. And I will grant wonders in the skies above, the, and the signs of the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke, and the sun shall turn into darkness, and the moon into blood. Hello. Hey, that's next month, guys. This is, we, we, get, this is on the TV schedule now. <laughs> great, uh, and the uh, moon into blood, and before the great and the glorious day of the Lord shall come, and it shall be that, the, er, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Adonai. Elohim, Yeshua. Last week when those Coptic Christians were killed, you know, the paper reported that they were screaming Jesus at the end. They were saying Yeshua. They were saying Yeshua. They're Coptic. <laughs> they never changed his name. Is that true? But I got my Tinas gallery back there. Is that true, Tinas? They never changed his name. What is your last breath going to be? What is your last breath going to be? These are people, we're, we're seeing heinous things going on. We have a responsibility to mankind. We can't stop them. We can't. But you need to share the gospel. We're going to break down some stuff. Let's go to uh, Revelation verse 6 and 6.12. Uh, I, may, I might uh, have to compress some of this. Revelation 6, 12. We see something happening here. Now, Joel prophesied, and it was repeated in Acts chapter 2. That was from Joel. And in, in Revelation 6, 12, we see, I, and then I looked, and he broke the sixth seal, and there's a great earthquake, and the sun became as black as a sackcloth, made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth, and a fig tree cast its unripe fruit when it was shaken like a great wind. Acts chapter 2. Holy Spirit, end time prophecy. It's there. It's there. It's there. End time prophecy reiterated in Revelation 6.12. Those prophecies have to do with the moon 
And we see that on this Passover coming up, there's a blood moon coming up. So the eclipse, the solar eclipse, during the daytime is against the Gentiles. The blood moon, two weeks later, is against whom? Israel. Israel is not sanctified. The land is. The land will always be sanctified. Very small percentage of the people believe in Yeshua. Very small percentage of them actually do anything other than sin. Israel has one of the largest gay populations on the planet, percentage-wise. They're completely secular. They have became extremely politically correct. They have the technology, they have the mindset. Some of the Jewish people think that the technology is their Messiah. Have you heard that, David? All right, you just heard it. That the mind, the self-ascension of the mind and knowledge is the most important thing. They really don't even believe in God, do they, David? No. Okay, you heard that one. So we have to understand that this judgment of the blood moon is against Israel and the church. Now, I believe there's a little, little separation there because the three blood moons that are coming are oh, that this next one, the third one, is over the United States. So we have three over the United States. The fourth blood moon in September will be over Israel. So I believe there's some kind of delay going on. What are you doing? Where are you at? Are you going to sit here and hold your breath? I tell you what, we've got to get that fire going. You see the tongues of fire for a reason because the Spirit of God edifies your spirit. As you pray in the Spirit, it edifies your spirit. It strengthens you. So when somebody like Pastor James comes in here and his wife is falling out, I, I like that. When they, they come in, oh, this is good. Or we start reading his mail. He's like, oh, you read my nail. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, he ain't getting away with anything. I literally put my hand on his hand. I saw where he was in the throne room. Hallelujah. So we, we have a kinship in the Spirit because it's all the Holy Spirit. I like this stuff. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel 1, 13 through 20. And this is kind of a trippy experience. And last week when we started the ministry out, the Lord reminded me about the time where we had the prophets come and they all laid hands and I'm, you know. I literally, my heart stopped. I was standing there. I had six people laying hands on me. My heart stopped. I was just, I was frozen time. I went to the Godhead, saw the Godhead, huge. <laughs> the Lord brought me closer to the Godhead. And then this angel came and stuck something down my mouth and went down in my belly. I stood there, and my heart stopped. I was sitting there going, okay, Lord, I think I just died. <laughs> Seriously. And it was just glowing white, and when I exhaled, everybody around me fell out. Praise God. Something happened here on Sunday, and we're going to talk about that in a second. And so, well, well you got all these great experiences. Well, you know what? Because I, all I do is go to church <laughs> six days, seven days a week. Seriously. I work at church. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 13. In the midst of the living being, there was something that looked like burning coals of fire, like torches darting back and forth among the living beings. And the fire was bright and lightning was uh, flashing from the fire. And the living beings ran to and fro like bolts of lightning. Did you see that the other day, Deb? And now as I looked at these living beings, behold, there was one wheel on the earth besides the living beings for each of our uh, for each of, of the four of them. The appearance of the will, yeah, and the appearance of the wills and their workmanship was like the sparkling buyer, and all four of them had uh, the same form. Their appearance was the workmanship of being as, as if one will were within another. Whenever they moved, they moved in any of their four directions without turning as, as they moved. As the, four, as the four of their rims, they were... Uh, lofty and awesome, and the rims of all the four of them 
were full of eyes around about. And there, whenever the living beings move and the wheels move with them, and wherever the living beings, uh, beings rose from the earth, the wheels also rose. Verse 20, get this one down. Wherever the spirit was about to go, they, were to, they would go in that direction, and the wheels would rose close be, beside them, and for the spirit of the living beings was in the wheels. We saw the coals. We saw these beings. They're talking about the cherubim. The four creatures. Something happens. Wherever the Holy Spirit goes, they're there. They're there. They're here. They're there. So when we're moving in the Spirit, and you start seeing that fire come down that wheel, they're there. They move towards that. There's a battle for you going on in the heavenlies that you may not see, but as you read this, you have to cognitively understand. Now, Pastor James used the term imagine. I, I like that word, I don't like the word. I like the word, I don't like the word. Imagine means you're just kind of making it up in your mind. You have to be cognitive, understand that the spirit, the flesh, those three forms, everything is working together. So when I'm speaking to you, I see your, your body, I'm speaking into your soul, and it's getting into your spirit man. All three working together, complete shalom. So we have to be cognitive that when the Holy Spirit's moving, these other forces are traveling with it. Is that true, Pastor? So she, she's, yeah, yeah, I'm not making up anything. She got this. And so this, these forces are out there. Let's go, let's go to the next verse. Isaiah 6, 1 uh, through, through 9. And we see this occur in several places. And why are we talking about this? Because I want to give you scripture. And I, I've been doing a, some heavy, 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 heavy studying. And... One of the things is I'm studying the generals. Uh, this thing with Mario Morello, he's been breaking down all the common prophecies of the generals of faith who have passed away in the recent years had certain things in common about the end of the United States. That there's going to be a big mess, but a big revival. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to get into that. Um, Isaiah chapter 6 and it says, in the king of uh, uh, Uzziah, the, uh, death, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, lofty and exalted, in the train of his robe, filling the temple. The seraphim stood above him, each having six wings, uh, two that covered his face, and the other two covered his feet, and, and with the two he flew. One, and one called out to another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord the, of hosts. The whole, earth is, uh, the whole world is filled with his glory. In the original translation, holy, 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 is written three, 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 nine times, and in the stanza of 27. Nine, holy, 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 nine times, holy, 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 nine times. In the third stanza, nine, holy, 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 nine times. 27 times, because it's an exponential number that will never go away. It's powerful. This is something they completely shout. And the word holy, 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 there is kodesh, which means separated. There's a, there's a separation there that you cannot pass through. But you can because of the blood of Christ. There's certain things you can do that the priest can't do. You could go into the holies of holies. And when we were talking to James about the holies of holies, he was saying when you get in the presence of the Lord, the Father, it's purple. It's purple, guys. Purple. Passion. Power, royalty. Let's go to verse 4. And the fountains, ooh, I like the fountains. And the fountains of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. And then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips. I live among people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king and the, king, the Lord of hosts. 
Then one of the seraphims flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it, and behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and you shall, your sins will be forgiven. Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Verse, that's verse 8. I threw that in there. I'm not going to read verse 9. I can read verse 9. And he said, go tell this people, keep listening, do not perceive, keep on looking, but do not understand. We understand right now that there's a falling away of the church. They are not perceiving and they're not understanding. There has to be a cleansing of the priesthood. The pastors, the prophets, the evangelists. There has to be a cleansing going on, and I believe there's an impartation going on in this ministry. He put it on his lips, for he's unclean. And when we start seeing this, that the, who put what on his lips, he touched my mouth with it, and behold, this touched our lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sins forgiven. Who can do that? Yeshua. He is also the Word of God. The Word of God is something that we need to be manifesting also. Manifesting the Word of God. Yeah, put it down, write it down, just to kind of figure out how to do it. <laughs> Speak the Word of God. There has to be that manifestation of the Word of God. Because the Gospel is based on, in the beginning, He was the Word. We've got to start putting these things together. So here's a position, Isaiah, the weeping prophet, no, that was uh, Jeremiah. Isaiah, the fifth gospel. It's referred to as a fifth gospel, Isaiah. And so here he comes at the very beginning of his ministry, this vision, but is he dead? Is he alive? He had an encounter with God. He was a priest, and even though he was a priest, he was still unclean, unfit. He knew there was salvation coming, but then the word came to him that took his sin away and his iniquity. And I believe that was Yeshua. So the voice of God comes to you so you understand how things operate. You wouldn't have these understandings when we start having these conferences. These are going to start ramping up, guys. We're going to start seeing this ramping up where we have to train people. Because not everybody can take what we're giving you. And we're going to talk about that in, the, in a minute. We see that these voices that people hear from God, when Moses went up to the mountain, he heard God's voice. The people at the bottom of the mountain didn't hear God's voice. They heard the rumble or the thunder or the shofar. The clarity in the throne room comes to the priests and the prophets. We are a priestly nation and a kingly nation. We have this access to the throne room through the Holy Spirit and that you got to start understanding how to get there. But there has to be a cleaning of your home, your tabernacle. So the average person will not be able to get to certain places. This is why the ministry is about, there's a validation of the ministry. It says in 1 Corinthians 14, it's not my notes, but he told me to say this anyway. In 1 Corinthians 14, there's a validation of the prophets by the prophets. Doesn't it say that? The prophets come and they validate the word of the prophet. There's a validation. There's a validation of the apostles by the other apostles. There always has to be an accountability of the different people in the ministries. If you want to get smart, stack your deck. I'm serious. If you've been around me, I've had folks like Pastor Jerry Phillips, uh, Pastor uh, Stan in Virginia. You start getting these men of God, folk around you that are clean cut and highly favored. I came across Lester Summerall in 1994. Hallelujah. I like that. He was a big man too. You met him? Big man. 
Lester Summerall had tuberculosis, ended up going to China. He was going to die, so he went on missions and got healed. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Ended up traveling around the world, ended up in England just before the war and during the war. As he went, when he was in England, he met Smith Wigglesworth, and he spent two years with him. There was an impartation there and a blessing. Now, Smith Wigglesworth had an old accent. He wasn't very funny. He didn't read the newspaper. He was a very serious man. I, I've, been, I've been studying these things because there's a positioning you've got to take in your demeanor. Certain things have to be open to God. Certain things have to be closed off from the world. And that we all have our own personalities. We have to understand what part of our personality God wants to use and what he wants to shut down. So there was an impartation over Smith Wigglesworth. And man, I'll tell you what, I, I, was, I woke up this morning and Kimberly comes in the room. She goes, are you awake? And I'm sitting there, I just got done listening to Lester Summerall repeat the blessing that Smith Wigglesworth has spoken over him and the anointing had me pinned in my bed. <laughs> well, Kimberly's out there. She has Camp Kimberly. What she, she'll do, she'll camp around the house. She'll find her, her little place where she digs in, you know. And one time I, I, I found her under the kitchen table. True story. And, and she, she had her laptop and a little, little thing set up. And, and you know what? That's whatever she wants to do. I don't care. <laughs> so she comes in at about 12.10 last night, and I'm pinned by the Holy Spirit. I'm receiving the blessing. You've got to learn to receive the blessing. First of all, you have to listen and recognize, hey, there's a blessing coming. And when it rains, get in it. Get in it. And we had, the, we had this ministry last week, and we had people show up on different days. I'll tell you what, the, how many people were here three days? Did you see everything happen? It got bigger and bigger. And see, that's what's happening right now. There has to be those kind of meetings that we're releasing this impartation. So let's go to um, Ezekiel chapter 10. Oh, what did, did, uh, da, 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 da. okay, well, let's go back to, uh, yeah, that's fine. Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 1 through 4. And this is a continuation of, of understanding. Here's two men having similar experiences. Same experience, different, different position. And it says, um, Ezekiel chapter 10, boop. Then I looked, behold, in the expanse that was over the heads of the cherubim, something like a, a sapphire stone, it appeared, resemblance of a throne appeared above them. Hey, you know what? I'll tell you what that was. That's the Godhead. Uh, I'll I tell you what. The, my experience, I'm going to go to my grave understanding. I saw the Godhead. Why did I see the Godhead? God. I was faithful, but he has a calling on me. I'm recognizing my calling. And he spoke to the man clothed in, the, in linen and said, Enter between the whirling wheels under the cherubim and fill your hands with coals of fire from between the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And, and, he, and he entered in my sight. Now the cherubim were standing on the right side of the temple when the man entered, the, entered and the cloud filled the inner court. And then the glory of the Lord went up from the uh, sheriff to the threshold of the temple, and the temple was filled with the cloud, and the, the court was filled with the brightness of the glory of the Lord. The coals are the words of God. Those are the spoken words that are sitting up there waiting to be released. Waiting to be released. That's the gospel. If you understand the Hebrew creation... He spoke the word. He spoke the word. These things are there for our use. They are holy, and they're set apart. So we have to become holy and set apart so we can receive those. Now, Israel has rejected some of these things in the past. This is a constant battle with Israel. Because Israel was in a state of flesh until the Messiah came. 
the coals are the word of God. And then what happened on Sunday, we got done, we got ministering. I said, okay, James, you pray for me. I'll tell you what. I was on the ground and I, my belly was being filled. I, w I was literally, I wasn't in a fetal position. But I was, I was like, dude. And he's been shoving these coals in me, like stoking my belly. You know, big, it's, it's stoked, guys. <laughs> it's looking, it's stoked. And he put in like 12 stones in there. I think I counted about 12. And so he was stoking these things. And so as I was going through this, I, I, I was, I'm, I'm studying all week, and I came across Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts gives the same impression of the end time of the United States as Dave Wilkerson, Brother Hagen, Smith Wigglesworth, and he says something. He talks about the fire and the damage in the cities and all, all hell breaking loose. He talks about the revival, and he says... He's going to put fire in your bellies. Is that what you had that tonight, honey? Yeah, okay. So the, the fire in your belly, there's, I looked it up. There's a, there's a meaning to fires in your belly. Wow, this, God's putting fire. You know what it says? One of the meanings of that? No excuses. No excuses. He put it in there. So I'm reading the biblical definition. And, and, and we see this. Let's go to Jeremiah ch chapter 20. In Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, the, the phrase is translated differently depending on which Bible you have. Now, in the Message Bible, how many people have a Message Bible? Anybody have a Message Bible here? All you, all you good Jewish folk? Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. In the Message Bible, it actually uses the word fire in the belly. In here, verse 9, but if I say I will not remember him or speak any more in his name, then in my heart it becomes like a burning fire, shut up in my bones, and I am weary and of holding it up and holding it in, and I cannot endure it. It says there's a fire in your belly, also a fire in your bones. It has to be your spirit man. It has to be your spirit man. And I pray for the release of this, and to you guys, that you understand your spirit man has to release this fire. It said that they start getting blocked up. The church is constipated, guys, and the fire is backing up, and people are burning out. They're burning out, and we have to shift that. The evangelists have to start coming out and evangelizing, and we had uh, Pastor Rob here, Smith, a couple weeks ago. He wrote a book on getting the Christians saved, and the complacency complicity, complicitness of the church, that's how that works, and the complacency of people have to change. Going back to Smith Wigglesworth, his prophecies went, and went as far as to say that the church is not prepared. That the nation's not prepared, the church is not prepared, and the individuals aren't prepared. That the army of God in the end time will be an individual force. When we collaborate, it's going to be very strong. But individually, you have to battle. I can't battle for you. That army of God in the Old Testament was covered by the anointing of the, of the priest or the king or whoever, and they had the covering and they went out and battled. The individual person now has to battle. This is why you need to have the fire in your belly. She saw that. <laughs> Kimberly started preaching my message today. That fire in your belly has to come up, and the release of that comes through impartation. If you can't sit through it, you're not going to get through it. I'm not, I'm not picking on Tom. But this impartation has to be up here. You have to understand it's happening. 
So last week when they came, there was, a, you have to realize, up here, something happened. There was a release. Okay? Well, it's not for you to feel good. I hate to tell you, ooh, I felt so good. Ooh. <laughs> it, don't, it don't work like that. The release comes so the impartation is doubled. Did you catch that? The release comes so whatever happened here, we cannot let it go out. We got to keep the fire going. We got to keep praying. We got to understand that God has a has released something important to us, a holy thing that we need to not whip up in the spirit. You know, there's a lot, ooh, ooh, look at that. Did you feel that? Ooh. Did I ever tell you the story about Keith Moore and Brother Hagen? How many people know Keith Moore? Keith Moore traveled around with Brother Hagen for about 20 years. And the first time he got in a car with Kenneth Hagen, he was sitting in the front seat, and Brother Hagen was in the back seat. And they're driving, and Kenneth Hagen grabbed the back of Keith Moore's seat and goes, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Well, these guys are Pentecostal. <laughs> and so Pastor Hagen, Brother Hagen, asked Keith Moore, did you feel that? And Keith Moore's like, oh. he goes, no, sir, I didn't. And you know what Brother Hagen said? Neither did I. <laughs> See, we have the church operating in a, in a, flesh mode and we're not really discerning individually what's going on we have to shift out of that but when we go to Korea we can't say everything that we see when when pastor Loretta when you minister you can't you can't say every you can't say everything that you see because sometimes you're ministering to babies and they're going to reject it they can lose their healing actually they get wounded. Ooh, how can you say that about me? Well, it's like, it's not nothing personal. So in the spirit, I'm trying to train you guys to operate in the spirit at a level where you're separating yourself so that king's anointing, the priest's anointing, they're working together. We have to become ambassadors of Christ. All right, I, I got to wrap this up. We saw, we, in Jeremiah, we see the, the fire in the bones. Where is the life? In the, in the bones. We need that spirit of life in our bones. It's also, they use the term belly. And let's, let's go to Revelation 3.16. 3, I was praying over this, and the Lord said, throw this in there to wrap it up. And this is the, uh, the church, I believe, that the United States kind of sits in. The church of uh, uh, Laodicea. And in... Revelations chapter 3, verse 16. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You want the real translation of that? Because you are neither hot nor cold, you are lukewarm. I will throw you up. I will throw you up. What do you throw up out? Hey, out of your stomach, out of your spirit. It's a disgusting place that the church is at. We have Christians being slaughtered no, by the thousands. 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 And we are not doing anything. And the pastors are going against Israel. We got, I ain't saying the Democratic Party, but they're going, Netanyahu's coming to the United States on March 3rd. Is it March 3rd? March 2nd? 3rd? He is coming to bed for his country because it's going to get blown off the face of the planet. And we're giving weapons to Iran, and those folks want to blow us off, off the planet too. They have intercontinental ballistics, that can reach our country. And we are allowing their students to go to MIT to the places where we're producing and understanding the nuclear physics and we're handing that over. Nobody's saying anything. We can get thrown in jail for saying this. This is crazy stuff. The fire's in my belly and I am not going to stop. Uh, Kimberly married me. Why'd you marry me, baby? I 
I'll tell you what. I'm the meanest person you've ever seen. Yeah, okay. Because I, if I see something, I will go after it, regardless how big, how ugly, how mean it looks. Because I know that in the spirit, I got these great big creatures around me. I got these great big angels around me. That I have a destiny in Christ and that I'm going to fulfill it. These generals don't become generals because they're privates. They gain access through promotion by discipline and perseverance. And that these wartime promotions are going to happen and that God will release the anointing through whoever stands in the gap. Stands in the gap. And if you can't show up to Sunday school, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. I don't want to put my hands up when I worship. I, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. We have to shift. This is serious stuff. And guess what? Y'all can't come over to our house when the hell breaks loose. And when things start happening, you have to pray for your own family. I'm trying to train you. This has been the message all along. The prophecy that people get, the ooey-gooey stuff, oh, oh, I had all these visions, blah, blah, blah. Great. What are you going to do with it? My reality, I've seen the Godhead. He put something in me. Twelve years later, he put something else in me. He stacks it twelve times. Twelve is what? It's the number of council? Number of tribe? Government? I believe there's an apostolic thing going on here because we were called to an apostolic thing and they're recognizing us as apostolic, uh, uh, apostolic prophets. And we're mean too. You know why I'm mean? Keep the flaky people away. <laughs> because they don't have any discernment. They don't use a mean guy. But we have to shift right now. This is important. I'm here. She's here. And we're not going to stop. There's a mission here. We're on a mission from God. Is that Blues Brothers? We're on a, <laughs> we're on a mission from God. And we're going to allow this to happen now. Father, we just praise you for the Yeshua house. We thank you for the blessings over Kimberly. We ask for that portion to go with her, that burning in her belly, to rise up a standard in the country of Korea. We ask for favor and protection over Yeshua house. We ask for that place, the new place. We ask that the old generals hook up with the young generals that we can produce a new generation of warriors, Father, in this mighty time. Father, bless Yeshua House and one new man in Yeshua's name. Amen.